Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Taking off the Tinker Day back on this T5R sedan. And we're going to deal with this PCV hose. Last thing we seen was the end of that split. I was able to take the other end loose, push it through to get it up that far. And I have one of these Volvo elbows. I'm going to put that on there. Try to get it on the end of that intake manifold so we don't have to remove this intake manifold. Somebody put an aftermarket intake manifold gasket on there. We don't want to deal with that. That's going to be a mess. Also looks like this cam seal over here may be leaking. We may pull that off to check that, but let us get this done first and move on from there. I disconnected that small hose from back there at the PTC and pushed it after I removed the rubber foam. Pushed it up as far as I could, which allowed me to feed this side up as far as I could. I did have Volvo elbow, so I got that placed on there and then I pushed it back through and hooked that side back up. But this is an aftermarket kit from IPD. And man, I'm just telling you, aftermarket PCV stuff just has not proven to last. This one was actually only two months old. That hose is melting. The one on this side was split. It's just not worth the risk and the, the cost of labor. So if somebody had to pull this intake manifold, re replace that hose on there, that's a $200 piece when it's Volvo. And then the labor is you know nearly six hours for the whole job so you can end up spending three four hundred bucks on replacing something that was just replaced so make sure you get the volvo parts for that so we're going to drop the coolant replace the coolant hose the coolant supply hose on the bottom of the turbo the one that bolts in the back of the turbo and then we'll see what's next original drain cock was broke i had one in my spare part so we're going to replace that Ah, it looks like that clamp gonna be hit from the top. Turn the other way. This clamp's gonna be hit from the bottom. So let me get this one loose, go up top and try to get the other side of that one. And you see a common evac problem here that's loose from that there. So that needs to be reconnected. Interesting, somebody's had this oil pan off. You can see it's got gray RTV sealant on there. Even though you got a lot of oil leaking back here. And they bent this tab back here on this subframe. That tab should be leaning in the car like this one over here is. So that tab's been bent back 180 degrees and left back that way. Probably did that to get the oil pan out. Seen it before, all crushed and jacked up. So I'm gonna switch it over. I took the pipe off with it, make it easy for me and get this installed. When you see rust on a pipe like that, that simply means somebody's been running straight water at some point during this vehicle's life. Coolant roulette. Hose goes this way. The fat part goes on the crossover pipe. The thin part goes on this turbo hose. Got the hose on where we can access both clamps. Clamps flush depth with the hoses, not squeezing the hoses too far. Now we're gonna bypass these oil cooler lines. That one's not even in the right place. It's supposed to be around this uh, fan shroud right here. Heck, I don't think that's why it's leaking, but it ain't in its right place. That could stress the hose. That's how that's supposed to be. That's supposed to be like that. It was on the other side of that. That could be stressing the hose, but they're leaking. We're gonna bypass them. Not gonna remove them. He can remove them later on. This vent box hose is not quite in right. This radiator is missing a spacer 
that holds that in. Somebody got it tied to some wiring here for some reason. I don't know what that wiring's from. It's going on the bottom of this. This air box, the side of the air box clip is busted. But we're going to put this coolant back in here. See if we got any leaks. Nothing's dripping under here. The new drain cock is holding good. Nothing dripping on the back of the turbo. We should be good to go. Let's get these oil cooler lines blocked off. And there it is, folks. The way Steve taught me how to do it. Block off plate installed. Thermostat pushed a little bit under it. It'll hold in place. Clear the belt. It's good to go. Now I need to get this mount here replaced. It's trash. So let me check with him, see if he wants me to check this rear cam seal on the intake cam. See if that's leaking. And if that's it, we just need to burp this coolant system and check see if the heater core is leaking for some reason. Bottom of this bottle is a little damp and the bottom of this hose is a little damp. Coolant leak could be there, but... Let's check the heater core just to make sure. And that looks a little saturated. I don't know how much coolant they're losing, but they're losing some. I don't know how often they got to fill it up is what I mean. Anytime you put a car on jack stands or on asphalt, I suggest you put some plywood under the jack stand to stop it from eating into the asphalt and destroying it, especially in your driveway. And the battery hold down clip, folks. This is too simple of an item to have missing or not installed properly in your car. Somebody's got some kind of metal jammed under this battery. I don't know what's going on with that, but here's the battery clip installed. I'm going to look for the heat shields and some hardware for this heat shield. A couple of screws in the front of this fan shroud, and I think we're done for the day. Now, I don't see any smoke at idle, but if I don't shift just right, if I hold an RPM for three seconds and then shift, I don't see a bunch of smoke. But if I just am accelerating and then I shift and that RPM is going up and drops, man, it puffs smoke good. So I need to check my PCV and do a compression test, see what's going on with Panther. But for now, I'm going to get up here on this V70, do the suspension. Time to do some work. I think this is the O2 V70. We got a headlight to replace, so we need to pull a bumper away. We got two struts we need to replace. We're going to swap the springs over the new struts. We have a steering wheel to replace. We got tent to peel off the passenger front window. And we have uh, a couple other things going on here. So let me get to work. Starting off with this suspension stuff. Oh, we got a CV axle and a control arm too. So let me get this stuff out of the box. See what we got. Get to work. And for some reason, up this hill, it is 10 degrees cooler with a little bit of a breeze. Put my sweatshirt on. I don't even understand that. Four miles, 10 degrees. But hey, I like it a little cooler. I may be out of this sweatshirt before long. Naturally aspirated. We changed that mount up there before. The ETM's been done. We got it up on jack stands. Time to take the wheels off. Change these shocks, man. I've bought them these shocks out hitting this casual bump. So let's get that cracking and work on getting this headlight replaced. This thing still has all the plastic across the top. I don't think the replacement does, so we'll move that over. Now this is an example of a bad alignment. You see how worn out the inside of the tread is? and the middle and the outside of the tire looks fine so this tire needs to be replaced the other tire is bad as well i think it's this old crack well it's a 2001 tire it's not old and crack just a little worn on the inside as well and the outside a little bit may have been running low tire pressure on it this tire's got a little bit of life left on it. Also see in there that that ball joint is totally separated from the bushing. So hopefully this is one that we got. We'll see. We're going to take this strut loose. Take this ABS wire loose. Take that 
and a sway bar in loose drop these struts and hopefully we got everything we need to replace them well i don't know if i ordered bump stops but sheesh it needs bump stops too a couple of months ago we ordered the right control arm because it was bad and now that we're here doing the work the left one's bad so that kind of sucks we don't have a left one we have a right one so we're not going to be able to do that today maybe in a couple of months crank those down 10 on each side until the spring lifts out of the strut seat now i'm gonna pop this nut up here loose i did get the anti sway bar loose the abs sensor out of it and pulled these bolts out down here pulled the 13s out up there the 13s up there was missing the washer so i'm gonna look see if i can find washers for those and these spring seats and strut bearings looked good so i didn't order those so let's see if i could pop this loose with my impact gun these volvo struts they should extend whenever you take them out of their springs but push them down they stay down they didn't budge so let me take this off get a bump stop uh, this could extend by holding it but it should extend on its own Let me pull this boot off and this bump stop and put it on the new strut and get the new strut assembled. Got that piece off of there that holds the ABS wire. Getting ready to move this other stuff over here, load this up. And as you can see, the piston extended when I cut the strap. That plastic piece even came off of there inside that bellows. So let me load this thing up and get it installed. I took this piece off of the old light and put it on this new light. You just got to press it, adjust these clips, press them out, and transfer it over. This one here was real hard. Broke that one. The rest of them were in good shape, so I'm good to go. Yep, and it looks a mess when you got that light out. I got the driver's side done on the strut. I got the driver's side light in. It's about to get dark probably within the next 30 minutes you see lights coming on out here i'm gonna knock it off for the day i'm not going to do this passenger side tonight i'll do it in the morning we're going to clean it up shed it down and do this suspension side in the morning then do the steering wheel and whatever else we got going on i think we got an engine mount thanks for watching if you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.